shout of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous. Come on, Shabbat the Lord. Give him a shout, a shout of praise, a shout of victory. Hallelujah. How great is my God. Sing with me how great is my God. Oh, we'll sing how great, how great is our God. Can you join the elders and the angels as we lift up the name of the Lord? How great is our God? Sing with me. How, how great is our God? Go ahead and bless His name. Blessed be the name of the Lord from everlasting to everlasting. and say, Lord, you are mighty. Shaka paria tabahosa. Oh, you are mighty. Bless him. King of the ages. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The wisdom of the ages. We have come before him who is called the ancient of days. The one who began the beginning. Thank you for your presence. Neke paria tabasata malikaba. Come on, worship, bless him. Blessed King of Glory, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Holy are you, Lord, and all creation, hold you, Lord, worship him in spirit, worthy, worthy is your name. And Lord, tonight as a family on earth, we worship
Lord, we bless you. Zaka Paria Bashandaya. Thank you for your glory, the majesty of your presence. Oh, we thank you. We bless you for the gift of your presence. We bless you for your presence. Hallelujah.
simple song. I live to serve your majesty. I live to serve. I live to serve your majesty. I live to serve. Exodus 33 From everlasting to everlasting we declare that thou art God The one who is and was and is to come Before you there was none other And after you there will be none other You are the custodian of the mysteries of the ages You are Lord and we bless you. It's our honor to serve your majesty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Like my brother rightly shared, Koinonia is a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to participate in everything that we're doing in this place. Hallelujah. Because this is how we are changed. The word of the Lord says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He says, And we all with unveiled face, beholding him as in a mirror. Even the glory of God, he says, We are changed. You may not realize how much you are being changed in his presence. But there is always transformation because when his glory shows up there is a potential difference and we begin to adjust and align ourselves until we become like him so this is holy ground hear me now this is holy ground This is holy ground. Hear me now. This is holy ground, my friend. So open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open your Jacob laid a stone and he slept therein and in the night he had a vision and he saw a ladder that connected the earth and the heavens and he saw angels ascending and descending and at the top of it was the son of God and he said I am the God of Abraham and he began to give him strange revelations and that's what the Lord is doing in this place hallelujah tonight we have come to press that's the theme of our meeting tonight to press into more of the realities of the spirit koinonia is for men and women who know that there is more know that there is more to his glory surround me oh lord Surround me, oh Surround me, Lord. Surround me, oh Even as the mountains surround Jerusalem. Oh 
Hallelujah. Exodus 33. Thank you for your mighty presence. Exodus 33. You know, he deserves royalty. And every time we have the opportunity to bless him, I love it when we praise God and bless him in concert. Because then he receives the glory and the honor and the majesty for the train of his robe fills the temple a cloud of heavenly worshippers surrounding his throne and we join Crying holy, holy is the Lamb, the Lamb of Can we bless His Excellency? I see the Lord, I see the Lord, your exalted high above the worship of the people of the earth. I see the Lord, I see the Lord, my eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forever. Hallelujah. Exodus 33, verse 7. And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it outside the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone who sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was outside the camp. And Moses, and it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle, that all the people rose up. And stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. Verse 9. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. 11. And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face. As a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, the young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Hallelujah. So take a break for one minute and walk to ten people and tell them it's good to have you tonight. God bless you. Come on, do that quickly. Make sure you walk up to 10 people, participate in the worship, it's part of the service. Walk up to 10 people, hug them, bless them, just impart something, impart the love of God, bless them. Whether or not you know them, say it's good to have you around. Make sure you smile, don't frown. There's joy in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, God bless you. You're welcome. Be seated in Jesus' name. It's good to have everyone around. Hallelujah. Tonight I'll be speaking. I want us to pray. Tonight really is a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. And I prayed, I said, Lord, please 
will quicken our spirits that we'll pray tonight. Hallelujah. So how many of you are ready to pray? We're going to pray. It's part of the pressing. Hallelujah. And I'll be speaking briefly on what I title hunger for greater glory. Hunger for greater glory. Hallelujah. Oh yes, we need more. We need more, 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 more. That has been my cry. I've been telling the Lord, Lord, more. I know that I've seen certain dimensions of your glory. But I need more. And I had to search through scripture and find a man whose life models my hunger. And in my quest, I fell across a great man that the Bible calls the meekest man on earth. Moses. Moses operated in such a realm of intimacy with God. Such a contagious hunger and a realm. Certain people seem to walk in certain dimensions of intimacy. For instance, the Bible tells us about a man called Enoch. He said, and Enoch walked with God and he was not. Hebrews 11 tells us of men and women who this earth was not worthy of. And so God is teaching and training us. And I trust that tonight, God will ignite a hunger in our spirits for more of his glory. For more of his glory. Hallelujah. Hmm. So let's continue our reading. Verse 12. I'll just run it down to 23. Just listen, participate in the reading. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people. Now, can you imagine? This is, this is Moses talking with God. Hallelujah. Imagine the, the koinonia, the participation. This is a man interacting with his maker. Hallelujah. See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom, will, whom thou will send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Verse 13. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, do what? Show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Verse 14. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Look up. I need you to know that every dimension of God you experience in the kingdom will come as a result of your pressing. Are you following me now? Every dimension of God you truly desire to experience or you experience the realms that we are all functioning in right now is a product of our pressing. Hallelujah. A product of our hunger. A product of all of those questions. How many of you have found yourself asking all kinds of questions and you will not just stop? I need you to understand that the Holy Spirit puts those questions there. Because the answer to those questions is the portal that opens you up to a new realm. Hallelujah. And so there needs to be a pressing for us to experience any realm of God's glory at all. God desires for us to step into the reality of his glory, of his kingdom, of his power, of his presence. He desires for us to begin to stand from his reality. Where we begin to function like gods on this earth. Psalms 82 says, Know ye not that ye are gods, and that all of you are children of the Most High. And so the Lord desires for us to step into a realm of intimacy. To step into a realm of understanding a realm of light a realm of revelation hallelujah a realm of his presence where we'll be able to accommodate greater dimensions of his glory greater weights of his presence brighter lights of his revelation that's god's desire for us hallelujah but he designed it in such a way that he doesn't just bring it and throw it. He said, do not cast your pearls before swine. So every time God wants to initiate you into a higher dimension, he uses hunger. Say after me, hunger. God puts a hunger. 
a dissatisfaction in your spirit that begins to compel you so that every accomplishment you've made is swallowed up in his glory and you suddenly begin to ride into another adventure of his presence another adventure of his glory another adventure of his power and how he longs for us to uncover the mysteries of his personality god longs that we come to know him personally god longs that we come to know him just beyond new birth okay i know jesus i love jesus i'm going to heaven and that's why we're here tonight hallelujah moses said lord i'm a great leader and i have a nation to lead but if i have found grace in your sight there is a higher dimension i've seen your power i've seen the wind the earthquake fire and and all kinds of things that characterize your presence i've seen the cloud the glory the visible manifestations he said but if i have found grace in your side i press for more i know that there are greater dimensions of your glory he said show me your way i don't just want to know your acts show me your ways and the Lord looked at Moses and said, I have respect for your hunger. My presence will go with you. As a result of your pressing, I will give you the gift of my presence. He says, my presence will go with you. And as a result, you will have rest on all sides. And he cried and said, Lord, if your presence goeth not with us, do not take us from here. Hallelujah. Let's read on and let me show you something powerful. I trust that God will just ignite a hunger and will press. Thank you. We'll press for more of his presence and his glory. 15. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not from here. Why? Verse 16. For wherein shall it be known that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing so that I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight. And I know thee by name. 18. When he gave Moses this revelation, Moses saw that for every time you press, God opens up a portal. Then he pressed yet again. Verse 18. He said, Lord, I beseech thee, show me your glory show me your glory i asked you for your ways and you said your presence will go with me now lord show me your glory show me i contend for your glory i want to know your glory so you see where we have that song now oh lord i want to know your glory i want to offer sacrifice that's where the song comes from. Feel this Nineteen, and he said unto him, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. Look at the level of intimacy. Look at the dimension of intimacy Moses was up. This is God, not an angel, not an archangel. God said, I cannot deny that you are pressing to know more of me. But at this point, you cannot see my face because the full expression of my glory is upon my face. However, I will hide you behind a rock and I will pass and I will permit you to see my back. Hallelujah. Because I will not allow you to see my face. Not because I don't want you to see my face. You will die. For no flesh can stand the dimension of my face and all that I represent. He said but i will do this to you i will allow you see my back 
I hope you understand that that's how he wrote the book of Genesis to Deuteronomy. Because Moses was not there. So how did he know that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth? How did he know that the earth was dark and void and formless? When he saw the back of God, there was a dimension of koinonia. And suddenly, streams of revelation. And that's the dimension God calls the past. Hallelujah. And Moses saw. And the Bible says after that encounter, Moses stepped into a new dimension. And the nation of Israel got angry and said, want to hear God. To God said, fine. Sanctify the people for three days. And then they will see what I truly look like. And on the third day, the Bible makes us to understand that God came and descended upon the mountain. And there was fire and smoke. And God said, for your own good, don't cross a certain level. Otherwise, you will die for nothing. And the Bible says, when they heard the rattling sound of his voice, the nation of Israel cried and said, God, we are sorry from today. Just speak to Moses. Whatever you tell him, we will listen. There is a dimension of God's presence that we need to press. There is a realm of higher glory. There is a realm of greater glory. John beheld his glory when he was transfigured. But in Revelation chapter 1, the Bible makes us to understand that when John was caught up to heaven, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And when he was caught up to heaven, he said, I saw one that looked like the son of man. However, I saw certain features that I didn't see when he was on earth. For instance, his hair was as white as wool and his face was like the sun shining in its full strength out of his mouth proceeded a double-edged sword and there were flames of fire on his eyes john said when i saw this i fell like a dead man there are dimensions of god's glory that we need to press in and to that i have come to stir up a hunger for those greater realms he told nathaniel you shall see greater things than this greater dimensions of his presence greater dimensions of his glory where his presence comes to tabernacle i'm not just talking about you having a sense by faith by faith where you become a walking tabernacle of his presence it's like an electromagnetic field that everywhere you move you carry certain audacious dimensions of his presence that everywhere you step in you are a carrier of his presence the presence of God is so mighty. I remember when they called on Balaam to go and curse the people. And something interesting happened in scripture. Because the Bible makes us understand that at a certain time when the prophet was going to curse the people, he saw that there was a structure and an arrangement in their camp. And facing them was the, um, the um, Ark of the Covenant. And he looked, he said, I cannot curse these people for the shout of the king is in their midst. He said, these people carry the presence. I can't curse them. It won't work. I'm going to be showing you some things about the presence of God. And then we'll allow God to grant us grace to press. This has been my hunger for years. Pressing for more of his glory. The full weight of his presence. The full weight of his power. The full weight of his grace. He said, if I have found favor, oh God, show me your glory. And Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, call unto me. I will answer. He said, I will show you great and mighty things. I will show you. You have not seen them yet. I will show you. It was when John was caught up in heaven that we knew that heaven had some things that he had. But before we saw them, they were still there. There are certain things that when we press for the glory, God will open our eyes and our ears to understand the revelation of the Christ, to understand the revelation of the kingdom, to understand the revelation of his presence. Hallelujah. And he said, my presence will go with you my presence will go with you many people really do not understand the revelation and the power of the presence of god going with a man moses said 
have stayed long enough to know the disadvantage of moving without your presence and so lord right on this mountain i contend i press i press until your presence goes with us do not take us from here hallelujah the presence of god he said for if your presence goes with us certain things will happen the nations will know that we are blessed that means the presence of god creates some physical evidences there are things that can attest to the fact that you are a carrier of god's presence and there are benefits that flow when you carry his presence and that's what i want to share with us very briefly i told you tonight is a prayer meeting a call to press to press for more of him the presence of god causes men to see his goodness and his favor upon your life let me tell you something when the presence of god mantles you men will acknowledge the fact that the goodness and the grace the favor of god is upon your life as we press for more of his presence as we open up ourselves for more of the weightiness of his presence we become like him we become saturated with his personality the fullness of all that he is and all that he represents is infused in us and we carry the weight of that glory and the earth cannot but acknowledge the fact that truly the goodness and the favor of the lord mantles our lives hallelujah the presence of god separates you it distinguishes you when the presence of god comes upon your life it separates you moses said if your presence does not go with us how can the people know that we are separate the presence of god distinguishes a man brothers and sisters it will separate you it will distinguish you before your world it will cause the world to see and acknowledge the fact that your god reigns as we press for more of his glory as we press for more of his presence it begins to birth your uniqueness the more you contend for his glory your uniqueness is revealed then the world begins to see the fullness of his deposit and his investment inside of you jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 he says call unto me i want to show you certain things however i only respond to your pressing there must be a hunger and he said call unto me and i will show you i will cause your eyes to see i will cause your ears to hear i will bring you into a dimension of intimacy i will show you my secrets the bible says the secrets of the lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants I will show you my secrets what men are struggling to get call unto me i just need you to press for when you enter that zone of the glory that realm of eternity there you will find that which your soul longs for i will give you wisdom i will give you an impartation the presence of god We must press we have a mandate to press for us to be relevant in our time and in our generation we must be literal carriers of his shekinah his manifested presence such that when you stand before people they can see the illumination the light the glory the power that radiates from your person not just your spirit but your spirit your soul and your body that's how you look at certain people and you know that the lord is with them they are carriers of his presence they represent true ambassadors of the kingdom and it comes as a response to a sincere hunger a sincere hunger hallelujah the lord told me that seven things will happen tonight as we press into his glory and i want to read it out for you so that you can connect with what god is going to be doing that as we press into his presence 
the first thing that will happen is that we're going to step into a realm of unusual faith unusual faith when you step into the realm of god's glory the capacity is imparted upon you to believe him more than ever you can say lord i believe you can change my family i don't know what has suddenly happened to my spirit man but in my sincere pursuit i now agree with you that this is not impossible i now agree with you that this is not over yet as we press and contend for greater glory there's going to be an impartation of faith in your spirit i'm not just talking of mental faith faith that produces results faith that subdues nations that shuts the mouths of lions faith that you can use and decree speak according to job 22 verse 28 it says and thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee so as we contend for his glory we will collide with real faith tonight and how we need real faith in our time how we need real faith how many of you would like to speak and begin to see things happen it's called the faith of the son of god is part of his nature and as we press into him these are some of the deposits that we will live with and the lord told me there will be a stepping into a real realm of faith faith is not just an impartation it's a realm faith is a realm it's a realm where your spirit come to terms with the ability of god and you lose the ability to doubt him it's the realm of faith number two we will be stepping into a higher realm of power a higher realm of power real power real power real power power to do the works of jesus christ power to heal the sick power to cast out devils power to raise the dead as we press we will collide with real power a powerless christian is an ineffective christian hallelujah power to speak power to bless power to decree power to call forth blessings into the lives of people these are derivatives of his presence as we press it's my desire that we come to points where when you walk up to somebody and say in the name of jesus i bless you suddenly the heavens have opened over that person because you are extending the manifestations of the presence of god into this person's life real power exousia ability dunamis the capacity to reproduce god's results the second thing that the lord is going to be granting us access to number three is we're going to step into a new realm of favor a higher realm of favor now please believe me all of these things i'm telling you are things that the lord communicated to me. stepping into realms of his favor that's why he said my presence will go with you and part of the things that you'll find in my presence is grace favor and as a result i will give you rest say after me rest and the word of god says he that has entered into his rest has ceased from all his works there are many of us that are struggling too much we are struggling too much and the disappointments and the struggles in your life by pressing in for the favor of god when you collide with the favor of God, men will run over and bless you for reasons you cannot explain. Are you listening to me? The favor of God has no explanation. You cannot explain why somebody will travel a long journey to come and bless you and you say, I'm going back. And people say, what in the world is this? Derivatives of pressing into his presence. There are benefits, my brothers and sisters, of pressing into the presence of God pressing for more of his glory pressing for greater glory number three number four the lord says we are stepping into a new level of revelation a new level of light insight insight by the spirit prophetic insight the capacity to comprehend spiritual things and make earthly relevance out of them 
the capacity to comprehend things he says the spirit of man is the candle of the lord searching the inward parts of the belly the spirit of man is the candle of the lord and the holy ghost is that light that comes upon that candle and sets that candle on fire and suddenly you begin to see the things that you couldn't see he will grant you understanding the bible says in hebrews in in isaiah chapter 11 it says and he will make you of quick understanding supernatural insight as a product of pressing into his presence suddenly you will see a straight line from genesis to revelation and mysteries will begin to connect themselves and god will open you up to the knowledge of his ways when you know his ways you can reproduce his results the only way to be able to reproduce a result is to understand the processes that lead to that result hallelujah just watching him play the keyboard it's not enough to make you know how to play keyboard when you learn the ways then you will know how to reproduce his results hmm. number five tonight as we press we are going to be colliding with a higher dimension of discernment there will be a mantle of the spirit of discernment the spirit of discernment the capacity to judge which spirit is behind whatever manifestation whatever action whatever word and let me tell you something this is a superior dimension in the realm of the spirit when you receive the capacity to judge between the manifestations of spirits it will end error in your life discernment discernment will save you from all kinds of trouble as a matter of fact the bible ties discernment to spiritual maturity it says strong meat are for them who are mature of full age who by reason of use have exercised their senses unto godliness to discern between good and evil we desire discernment discernment the capacity to stand and watch and you see things happening in your family that's what jesus op the, jesus operated in that strange dimension he saw a woman who was bound i mean was had bent over and by discernment he knew that it was more than healing it was the operation of demons and he said woman thou art loose from thy infirmity they brought to him a boy who was epileptic and by discernment he looked at that child and the bible says he rebuked the deaf and dumb spirit what is the relationship between deafness dumbness and epilepsy the power of discernment discernment will help us to know what to pray on discernment will help us to know how to receive the results we ought to receive discernment will open us to realms of visionary encounters discernment will open us to the riches of the spirit that's the fifth thing number six as we contend for more of his glory we will collide with liberty that's what the holy ghost told me liberty liberty means freedom absolute emancipation from bondage the presence of god the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it there are several of us who are suffering all kinds of things wait as a result of the bondage of darkness but as you contend for his presence everything that represents darkness will fade away believe me it says now where the spirit of the lord is there is what liberty 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 and the last thing the lord is going to be releasing upon us even as we contend for his presence is the strength of the lord the strength of the Lord supernatural strength Paul prayed and said I pray that he be strengthened in your inner man you need strength for the journey brothers he said 
if you turn aside in the day of battle he said your strength is small and he prayed in Ephesians chapter 3 he said I pray that ye be strengthened in your inner man Colossians chapter 1 also talks to us about being strengthened in our inner man there is need for strength for the journey is far for the journey is far for the journey is far and we need to collide with his strength seven things that as we press the Lord will be exposing us to. so that's our goal for tonight a hunger for greater glory and we're going to be crying and pressing together and say Lord more more of your glory and all of these spiritual deposits many of us will find ourselves stepping into different dimensions of these riches and if we do this then we are done the job is complete for tonight how many of you believe that you're going to step into all these dimensions hallelujah it takes a participation with the spirit it takes a pressing it takes a hunger you must see a need brothers and sisters for as long as you're satisfied with nominal christianity just come to church after all i'm fine no there's got to be more say after me more a hunger for greater dimensions when the lord showed me this i said lord i need a baptism of a greater weight of your presence upon my life oh for i know what the presence of god can do to a man the presence of god truly brings rest in your life truly brings rest if you have if you don't have the i'm, I'm talking of the manifested presence of god not just the presence of the holy spirit living in you a higher dimension of his presence a cloud of his presence and it's my desire i prayed for every one of us today i said lord let everyone live with your presence that you begin to walk as a living carrier of his presence that everywhere you go god is there when you step into a room you step in with all kinds of spiritual blessings whether you know it or not you will bless people unconsciously as a result of the presence of god that you carry and men will attest to the fact that there is something about your life that there is something about your life that when someone comes and sows a seed to your life before he turns in that realm of glory he will not even know the difference between seed time and harvest because you not only are a fertile soil you are a soil that exists in the realm of eternity that when you look at someone and say you are blessed your words connect the person from the realm that you are existing in and the person begins to step into certain realities the presence of God will open you up to visions of Jesus how we need visions of Jesus many of you have seen him in your dreams many of you have had all kinds of encounters but did you know he wants to call you to a deeper level of fellowship Jesus wants us to see his face he wants to talk to us many of us will be opened by discernment to angelic realms where you not only unconsciously bump yourself into the activities of angels but you know that you'll be worshiping in a room how many of you have been worshiping in a room and you know i'm not alone in this place and then you discern that there are not only angels you don't know how you know but you know that there are elders in this place you know that there are saints in this place and you know and it motivates you to worship his glory and worship his majesty never lose sight of God's presence is the secret of rest and if you ever desire rest in your life it's going to be found in his presence that's why the Bible says he that dwells in the secret place there is a place he calls the secret place the secret place the Bible says when it was time for Samuel to anoint Saul, he didn't anoint him outside. He drew him to a secret chamber. There Saul encountered an anointing. Every time God wants to impart things upon men, he draws them to the secret place. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my help. 
And so I want us to press tonight. We are going to be crying and pressing for more of him. Oh, that he would show us more of his glory. That his beauty will mantle our lives. That he will cause us to be strange men on earth. The Bible says there are certain people whom the earth was not worthy of. These were men and women who pressed for his glory. The glory of God brings favor, revelation, access, discernment. Are these not the things that we run after? But the presence of God will bring it. It's my desire that every one of us who have come here tonight, that even as we press, we will encounter these dimensions. Suddenly, people will look at your life and say, Shei, what is, what is it about your life? What is it about your words? Every time you speak, your words come like rocks, like thunder. How come? What is it about your language? It's not about the English. It's about the realm that it proceeds from. That's the dimension we must press. There is a cry tonight that we press for more. Greater glory. There are generals in this place. And that's why God is beckoning on us to press for greater glory. Greater glory. To say, Lord, I can see more. I can step into a greater level of perfection and accuracy. I can step into a higher level of discernment. I can step into a higher level of illumination where the Bible is not just a storybook. Opens up the scroll and the seals and you begin to comprehend the mysteries of the spirit. He said, who is worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls? For in that book are archives of the spirit. And when the scroll, the seven scrolls are unlocked and the seal is opened, then your eyes will see. You will see that which is not permitted for men to see. You will hear that which is not permitted for men to hear. And you will step in realms that are supposed to be out of bounds. The Bible says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it come into the comprehension of any man what God has in store for them that love him. He said, but God has revealed them to a certain generation of people, men and women who will press. Press for his glory. Beyond titles, press for his glory. Beyond recognition. As you press for his glory, his presence will mantle your life. His beauty, his energy will come upon your life. And then you will be a sign and a wonder. I assure you, from the least to the greatest in this place, his presence will turn you into an inferno of fire. The Bible says he maketh his angels, spirits, and his ministers, flames of fire. As you press, then the heavens are open unto you. And John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I saw seven lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands was one like the Son of Man, and his hair was as white as wool. His face was like the sun shining in his full strength. He said, Out of his mouth proceeded a double edged sword. Tonight we are contending. Listen. Hallelujah. I want us to take the next 10 to 15 minutes to press. The altar is open. You want to lie down. You want to shift your chair. Whatever you want to do. Instrumentalists for the next 15 minutes don't stop. I need us to press. God is training us. God is building us. You came here tonight because you want to press. Whatever has position you want to assume. And for the next 15 minutes, as we pray in the spirit, press. 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 
सोपारी का था रेखो तो सोम रेखे थे
for my life. New dimensions. I cry new dimensions. New levels for us, Lord. New dimensions. New dimensions. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is Koinonia, where God exposes us to His light, where we are changed, where we receive where we are being. You may not realize how much upgrading, how much freedom, how much faith, how much power that this has brought into our lives. Only the future will tell how much we are stepping because we are not yet there. It's a journey that lingers beyond this service. Lord, we truly appreciate you. We truly, truly appreciate you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. We never take your presence for granted. Never misuse and abuse. The benefits of your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, like Moses, let your presence go with us. Let your presence go with us. Let your presence go with us. For we can do nothing outside of you. Let your presence go with us. Lord, in an unusual dimension, beginning from tonight, in an unusual way, let us leave this place, lead trial careers of your presence. Let it affect the people in our jobs, our rooms, our ministries. Let every virtue of the Spirit that can flow from your presence flow through us. Thank you for your faith. Thank you because from tonight we we'll begin to decree and see new things and see the wilderness become a fruitful field. And a fruitful field become a forest. Thank you because our words are empowered. Thank you for the liberty that flows from your presence. Thank you for the revelation, insight, unusual understanding of your word and of the principles of life. Thank you for glorious encounters 
glorious encounters glorious encounters glorious encounters of your spirit thank you for strength thank you for depositing strength for the journey strength in our spirits strength in our minds strength in our bodies thank you for liberty liberty over the limitations of this realm liberty over the oppression and the devices of Satan and the sons and the schemings of the sons of disobedience thank you for your favor thank you for your favor new levels of favor thank you for your favor thank you for your hand thank you for the blessings of your presence we live to love your presence let your presence never depart from us O God. we know the value of your presence that from today we will speak from your presence we will lead from your presence your presence is the secret of this ministry your presence is a secret Lord we cry on behalf of your people I cry let your presence not depart from us for outside of your presence there is no impact outside of your presence there is no transformation outside of your presence there is no power outside of your presence there is no revelation outside of your presence there is no discernment outside of your presence there is no favor outside of your presence there is no in one minute can we sing this song together we pray that beyond tonight we will step into unusual dimensions of your presence teach us to live in your presence bring great results into our lives on account of your presence separate us as a result of your presence and cause our community Zaria Kaduna State and even this nation and the world to know that we are carriers of your presence.
Jesus. Bakuti bini mong si prata la rapa de gondo si prata la barraba le gonsha. I'll be sharing with you. I didn't read them from a book. I didn't read them from a book. These things are things the Lord taught me. They are powerful principles the Lord taught me. The principles I saw walking from the God's word. The principles I saw walking in God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selma. The principles walking in the servants of God across the world. Just in a bit to prepare our hearts for the miracle service. But please pay attention tonight. For some of you truly, you'll be blessed richly. Forget about your anointing first. Are you following? For some of you, what you need is an insight from God's word. An insight that will come from God's word. I'll try as much as possible to run and just hit the point. Then lead us to pray. It's been a while that I spent time praying and things that happened to me tonight. And when it was happening to me, the Lord said he will visit some people like that. Listen to me, it's not about the anointing. Because I missed it all. My focus and my heart desire was this. I said, Lord, after this whole meeting, let me come to know you. That's my singular prayer for me. Are you following? Because the Lord will bless you tonight. I'm not thinking about it. Don't worry. For some of you who may be wondering, Lord, help him. I don't need help from man. The Lord. Are you following? But my prayer is just that your heart will be open. That the Lord will transform you truly. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for the blessed Holy Ghost. Thank you for the blessed Holy Ghost. Thank you for the blessed Holy Ghost. And my Father, tonight I pray. I ask that, Lord, you transform men by the power of your word. Release upon them something that will change them forever. I ask that, Lord, veils be removed tonight. Ah, my God, I pray that strength will come in the spirit. 
that men will take off and run in the spirit. Because for some of us, literally you feel fire on your legs. Let me tell you when I was praying, suddenly it felt like I began to walk on coals of fire. And it's been a while like that that I threw out my shoes and I began to run. And upon some of us, a deposit of God will come. again a vote will come from heaven a vote well, what I mean by that is like electricity will hit some people like electricity will hit some people like electricity will hit some people Just pay attention because for some of you as I teach, as I teach, I'm telling you what God will do. That's why I'm interested in teaching more. I know what I received in the secret place. You don't understand what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Please just quickly sit so that I can run into this word quickly. Quickly welcome your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you're welcome to God's presence. Hallelujah. I'm just quickly going to be talking to us and leading us to pray. Paris, si vidon, si me prang de le brossi crata la brande. The hand of God will come upon some of us. I'm telling you. I'm going to be talking to us briefly, just more, if you feel like tagging it, more in preparation for miracles. In preparation for miracles. Hallelujah. I'll just quickly run through a definition here to help us. What exactly are miracles? Very important. 
because I just want to quickly define what a miracle is. I wrote here, it's an act of God. The act of the divine God, that's what I mean. Our Heavenly Father. Contrary to the law of nature. It's a supernatural intervention from heaven. Every time the heavens engage into this realm, are you following? God brings down something to this realm. God deposits a miracle. It's an interruption. A supernatural interruption. It's an extraordinary thing. It's something that causes people to marvel. Hallelujah. And I want you to understand that it's the intention of God that believers receive miracles and see miracles. Are you following? Hallelujah. Very important. Now, why do miracles happen? I'll give us some quick reasons why God does miracles. Because God does not just do miracles to impress people. Are we following? He doesn't just do miracles to impress people. Hallelujah. It's just to get to prepare our hearts for a miraculous life. And more so, to get to prepare our hearts for the miracle service. Are you following? So, we perpetually walk in miracles. We receive. We learn how to receive miracles. That's the intention of this teaching tonight. To help us that at the end of this teaching we will become miracle workers. Hallelujah. And we will learn how to receive miracles from heaven. Is that okay? Praise God. Now I want you to quickly look at your neighbor. I hope you know that. Tell your neighbor that there are laws in the spirit. Are you following? There are different laws. There are physical laws. There are spiritual laws. As a matter of fact, there are soulish laws. Are we following? But tonight my concentration briefly is just going to be the spiritual laws and natural laws. Now, we all know, for those of us that did physics, we know, is it Archimedes principle now? The moment, you expect that the moment you put something on water, what's supposed to happen? It's supposed to float, right? Is it float or sink? Floating, right? That's for boat, then there's space inside. Hmm? Now, the law of gravity, the moment you jump from a high place, what's supposed to happen to that man? But is it possible for a man to jump like this and suddenly remain in the air? Is that possible? But do you know, surprisingly, we see in scripture many times God reveals to us that a point in time came, Jesus was speaking to his disciples and you know what? He began to take off. And they were looking at him in Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 1. Suddenly, they began to see the Lord take off. And the same thing is going to happen to us at the rapture. Amen? A great servant of God, Apostle Babalola, walked in that realm. Suddenly, he was talking to his people and, you know, suddenly, one of the days, they just saw him, he began to, God began to take him up. They literally were seeing him being taken up and they quickly had to hold on to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then we see an amazing scenario. I've tried walking on mud. I've not tried walking on water. And even the mud I tried walking on, I found out that my shoes got muddy. Are you following? But Jesus looked at water. He didn't think about it. He began to walk on water. And just to show us that it's possible. Are you following? Because every time God de decides to intervene in the laws of nature, are you following? Spiritual laws are higher than the laws of nature. Spiritual laws are higher than the laws of nature. I want you to know that this physical realm we are seeing, there's a realm, a spiritual realm around this. Are you following? For every physical thing we are seeing, there is a spiritual law that makes it manifest. And the spiritual laws are higher, far higher than the natural laws. So every time God wants to change something in the physical, there's a higher law the Lord introduces. Hallelujah. This is the law that defies science. So, a scientist cannot understand how can a man, how can a man walk against gravity? How can a man walk on water? How can you see a sick body and suddenly they tell you this person has cancer and suddenly life comes into that person? John G. Lake was sharing something very amazing. He was 
talking to a group of scientists and they looked at him and they said it's impossible for this dead cell there was a man that had an inflammation in his bone and they saw it they x-rayed it and they noticed there were dead cells and you know what he told them he prayed to god he said god please show yourself strong before these people and he laid his hands on the man and began to pray he said they should be watching it under the x-ray and they were watching it suddenly they noticed life began to fuse in from john Gillick, and life began to enter and suddenly they found out that cells that were dead were coming alive how do you explain this how do you explain this it defies science how do you explain see god has the ability to break the law of economics are we following the law of economics because the bible said about isaac that in that same land isaac sowed there was famine but in that same land he sowed and guess what he reaped a hundredfold how do you explain that this is when the hand of god when god introduces a higher law above every natural law he suspends every natural law are you following hallelujah now let me quickly show you something now i want you to understand that when we talk about miracles tonight i'm not just please do not limit it to just a breakthrough because a miracle can come in form of wisdom it happened in the time of joseph are you following suddenly pharaoh did not know what to do suddenly the wisdom of god was revealed in joseph and joseph knew exactly what to do so it could come in form of an idea it could come in form of wisdom hallelujah miracles can come in form of healing are you following it's any supernatural interruption from heaven simple many times we just segment them for the sake of theology just to help us understand the gifts of healing are you following the anointing and all that we just get to separate some of these things sometimes but you know every time god intervenes in something the hand of god the moment the hand of god is revealed in something it's called a miracle why does god do miracles is very important please i want you to know tonight that usually people just run to god and say god miracles miracles but the question is why does god do miracles i'll quickly run through 10 things 11. there are more than this are you following i just picked a few number one to demonstrate his love nature and heart of compassion matthew 15 32 to demonstrate his love nature and heart of compassion we may not read all those scriptures please just write them down why because jesus looked at the multitudes at some point in time and you know what the bible said he was moved with compassion many times before the lord will do many miracles you will see the heart of compassion will well up in him please i want you to understand this because for some of us in ministry and those of you trusting god for a miracle or praying for a miracle for somebody now you must understand this because when you see the way god sees are you following it changes things a lot of times even praying for a sick body i was caught in that trap before we'll call up a sick body and you know what we'll be praying back then when we used to have eni around chapel and you know the intention in my mind my small mind in my mind i used to think that the best thing is if a person let the person just fall that was what was my mind many times in ministry for some men of god they are just interested in people falling wounding and you know what? whether they get healed or they don't get healed it's not their concern but that's not how god sees it are you following the father is moved by compassion this simple principle this simple reason i'm telling you applies to virtually everything god does everything when i mean everything i mean everything healing are you following blessings whatever god does god gives out of compassion number two to reveal his kingdom wisdom power and glory Matthew 15, 31, John 11, 4. To reveal his kingdom, wisdom, power, glory. Hallelujah. And the story of Daniel, when Daniel displayed such wisdom and was able to tell the king what was in his heart. I hope you know that's a miracle. Because you know, that was something that man did not do in his strength. It came from heaven the moment daniel did that you know the amazing thing the king looked and said surely he knows that what there's a god in heaven 
Why? Because it revealed the glory of the kingdom of God. Quickly, number three, to reveal his original intent. Hmm. To reveal his original intent. What does that mean? God does miracles because in the beginning, some of the confusion we see, the lack, the hunger, the sickness, and everything man requires miracle for. In the design of God in Eden before, there was no need for them. Are you following? Why? Because God made everything in perfection. Are we following? Before man fell. So everything was good. You could see that in the display of the wisdom that came from Adam. You could see that from God's fellowship with him. Suddenly, there was something happened that caused everything to go out of order. And there was a need for God to what? Always come revealing, manifesting himself, performing miracles to what? Reveal his original intent. Number five, to save sinners. Huh. John 6, 29. Help us. John 6, 29. To save sinners. Very important. Very, very important. Hallelujah. John 6, 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. Are you following? To cause men to believe. So many times when God does a miracle, for instance, in Acts of the Apostle, suddenly when because the bible said tongues are for what signs are you following so when they heard the people speaking different languages in the spirit suddenly they had the disciples speaking and that was a miraculous act of god suddenly the people wondered and said these guys are not our tribe but we hear them speaking our own native languages so god revealed himself and caused that three thousand souls were added to him that day are we following the next one, number six, to save believers from harm, to draw us closer to God. John eleven fifteen. Yes, God does miracles. You know why? Sometimes I heard of a testimony of a brother one time that he was in the boat and suddenly the boat had a little challenge and it capsized, and he was crying out to God. He was crying out to God and asked God that please deliver me. Suddenly, he said he felt a hand. He felt a hand carried him out of the water. That was an angel. That was an angel. One of the times doing our service here in Bauchi, during election, something began to happen and a lot of people came, you know, and our lives were threatened. Suddenly, we went out with the general secretary then we call him uncle as i stepped out with him something amazing happened a guy just looked at us and said you are looking for keke i said yes he said he just stopped one keke and said go inside and the moment we sat inside the bike just started moving and we turned we did not see him are you understanding because you know many times some of us, God reveals miracles. We meet angels we do not know. Debbie was sharing one time. Debbie made that now. She was saying how she was praying in court. She was praying one time and asking God. Then we're doing teachings on the angelic. She was asking God that God, please, just let the miracles begin to function in my life and all. And you never know sometimes, many times, angels visit you. But you know what? You see them as human sometimes. So you may lose the touch, not knowing that they are angels from God. And she went to the library, she was reading. And suddenly she was confused about something. She had a test. And suddenly a guy walked up to her, a black t-shirt. And he just tapped her. I know because of the black t-shirt, you'll be wondering, is he an angel? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people will say, the angel is supposed to come white. White, white. Oh. You saw the other day, the apostle was talking about seeing an angel in red. Are you understanding? So spiritual things, please don't use your mind to try to explain them. And the guy tapped her and said, read here and here. And the guy walked off. Suddenly she turned. She thought she was dreaming, but she was awake and she didn't see the person. And she read those places for her test. And they came out. Now don't be lazy and don't, you better read your books. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because, you know, sometimes, truly many times, we just try to cheap out of things and we don't want to read. We just say, God, do those miracles. Are you following? 
place you must understand there's a place of what diligence and hard work and there's a place of what the miracles of god hallelujah number seven to show forth his sovereignty deuteronomy 4 32 to 35 quickly please somebody help us quickly read that deuteronomy 4 32 to 35 quickly let me just rush through this this is not where my emphasis is tonight deuteronomy 32 35 these are the reasons why God does miracles amongst many. Hallelujah. Okay. For act now of the days that are past, which were before, that since the day that God created man upon the earth and asked from the one side of heaven unto the other whether there had been any such thing as this great thing is or has been heard like it. Please continue. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of fire as thou hast heard and live? Please continue quickly. Or had God as said to go and take him a nation from the midst of another by temptations, by signs, by wonders, and by war, and by mighty hand? Please just continue. Unto thee it was shewed that thou mayest know that the Lord is God. He did all those miracles. He let them hear his voice. The Lord revealed his mighty hand. The reason was this, that they will know that he's God. You know why? Because God is not contesting with any man. Are you following? Some people have raised gods in their villages. So just in case, man will stand and say, we have a God that can do something. God comes many times to show that there's none like him. Are you following? So he does them to show that he's God. To show that he's God. Dear Osborne will tell us many times and he will share testimonies and stories of how he went to preach in a place and he took his black Bible and he said, God, Jesus is alive. Some people took black book. I hope you know the Mormons have black book too. They have a book. They call it the book of the Mormons. And they carried it. The other religions carried it and they said, we have a black book. What's the difference? And he said that Jesus is Lord. He said, let the deaf people stand blind. And he said he will pray. They should come and pray in the name of what they believe in. And if this deaf here and the eyes open, then he knows that what? Their God is alive. Aha. When he said that, everybody began to look for the nearest door and strolled out. And he came and he told them to stand. No gymnastic. He just looked at them. And he prayed in the name of Jesus Christ. The blind eyes, every blind eyes there was opened. Every deaf ear was opened. Hallelujah. Number eight, to meet man's need. John 6, 5. Number nine, to honor Jesus. John 5, John 5, 19 to 23. Quickly, I'll just run through them. Number 10, to receive praise, worship, and thanksgiving from man. Psalms 147. Please, you can write that down. Quickly go and read them when you get home. Why? Because, you know, every time God does miracles, this is why it's good we come and what? Testify. Are you following? Because as you testify, it's the reason why God did it. You know why? So that we can acknowledge Him and give Him praise. Hallelujah. Finally, to approve of His servant. Numbers 16, 28 to 35. God does miracles to approve of his servant. The Bible says, these signs will follow them that believe. These signs. The Bible says of how God had anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of devils. Acts of the Apostle 10, 38. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now what do we put in mind? Quickly. What do we put in mind? Because you know what? Many times I just showed you the reason why God does this. His intention of God to do miracles. Are you following? But many times, there are things that a man needs to put in his heart. There are things that a man needs to put in his heart. Number one, that God is good. Please touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor God is good. Tell your neighbor the Lord is good. You know why this is very important? Because many times people come to God not being sure if he's a good God. But the Lord is good. Are we following? The Lord is what? The Lord is good. Number two, God is faithful. 
God is faithful. These are things you put in mind. Number three, God desires to bless you. Hmm. God desires to bless you. Number four, God wills to heal and bless you. Yeah. Number five, God loves you. God loves you. A man looked at Jesus Christ and you know what he asked Jesus Christ? He said, if it is your will, make me whole. And Jesus Christ looked at him and said, I am willing. A guy came to my room many years ago when we were still students on campus. I think we were in 100 level then. Around 2004. 2005. He came to our room and you know what he told me? He said, God has stopped healing people. God has stopped touching people. He said, God has stopped doing all those things. You know, there are some people that believe like that. Have you seen people that are sick and are, say, are saying that maybe it's God that is dealing with me? Have you seen that? Have you seen people fall sick and maybe they say that it's God's will for them to be sick? The question I ask many times, pastor, sometimes I ask this question, honest question. I said, if you believe it's God that made you sick, there's no need to be praying for healing. If people come and visit you, you should just say, praise the Lord for me, I'm so sick. Just give God praise that I'm sick. Have you seen anybody like that before? That is sick, very sick, and he's praising God and saying, God, thank you for this sickness. Ah, I give God praise. In fact, call people to come and celebrate that you are sick. But you know what? Somehow in the heart of man, somehow deep down in our spirit we sense that you know what it's not the finger of god it's not the signature of heaven praise god because you know what? god what does god derive what joy comes to the father that you are sick what joy comes to the father that your children have not eaten from morning till night because jesus died so that we will have blessings are we following so we'll have blessings blessings he said, I have come that I make what? That you may have life and have it what? More abundantly. Plenty. Hmm. Now I want you to know something about miracles. It is not for some people. Are you following? Please touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it is not for some. Mark 9, 23. Mark 9, 23. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 9.23 Thank you, blessed Father. This was the account of Jesus Christ coming from the Mount of Transfiguration. In verse 15, something very remarkable happened there. Because in verse 15, something happened. The Bible said when they turned and saw Jesus Christ, they were amazed. You know why? Because he had robbed with glory. So the moment they saw him, there was something they saw in verse 15. The Bible said they were amazed. But that's not my point. That's not my point of emphasis. It's 23. Because God healed me. I had an AS genotype. My fiance had an AS genotype here in Koinonia. How many of us were aware of that testimony? Or rather, are aware of that testimony? Yes. Some people are looking at me now. You know what? They are like, really? Yes, really. Praise God. Yes, God healed me. I don't know. I don't have the test result here. I would have shown you. Now, I believed in God. I have seen God do miracles. We prayed for people. We had gone for Pangshin Crusade. We had seen God do miracles. Through his servant. Through my brothers. I had seen some miracles in my life too. Hallelujah. But listen to me. God asked me three questions and I'll ask you those three questions tonight. Number one. God asked me. Do I believe he can heal me? He didn't say he can heal. He can heal me. Number two. He said, 
Do I believe he's willing to heal me? Number three, he said, even if I don't get healed, what will I say? For the first time in my life, I didn't just rush out. Because tonight I will show you some few things about miracles and about receiving miracles for you to help you understand something. Please pay attention. I'm speaking to you. Something had happened to my life. Are you following? At, by the mercies of God and by the grace of God, God had chiseled that I had seen some miracles personally that I received, not the ones I prayed for for people now, that God had done in my life. And yes, by his mercies, we've seen God do miracles through our hands. But now when the Lord asked me those questions, I was not in a rush to answer. I was not in a rush to answer. The reason is this. Many times people can rush and say, wow, that yes, God, you can. I had to truly ask myself, truly, do I believe God can heal? Mark 9, 23. A father ran to Jesus Christ and see what he said. He began to compare the disciples of Jesus Christ and said, Jesus, I've come to your disciples. They could not do anything. Can you? That's what he was asking Jesus Christ here. He was asking Jesus if, if Jesus could. And many times, many of us do that. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Is that true? Is that true? The Bible says, all all things, not some things. The Bible says all things are possible to him that what? Believeth. Believeth. To him, not to them. To him, an individual that believes. So I had to ask myself, do I believe God can? And I paused and I realized, truly I believe God can. The next question, do I believe God is willing Yes, he's wanting to believe God can. You believe God can give you things. But you know what? You've been sick. Possibly you may have been sick for years. And you know what? You believe God can heal people. But you know what? To believe God can heal you. Then the next thing, to believe God is willing. He wants to. He desires to. Are you following? The next thing, to believe that you know what? What if God doesn't heal? Faith is not foolishness. Are you following? Let, let me tell you something. There's a higher re- level of faith, a higher realm of faith that many times people do not know of. The new creation has abused faith to a point that they make it look like if you ask God once, if nothing happens, forget about it. Let me tell you, there's a level of faith that the Hebrews, Hebrews in Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11 spoke of some kinds of people. They refused their names to be written. The Bible says they were sword asunder. And when you read Daniel, you will see that Daniel began to what? Reveal to us that there were some Hebrew boys that looked at Nebuchadnezzar. They dropped the king from his name. They said, Oh Nebuchadnezzar, be it known unto you that our God can deliver us from this flaming fire. But even if he doesn't, are you following? Because many times we've reached a point that you know, some people say, God, if you do not heal me, imagine me saying, God, if you do not heal me, I'll pack my load and leave you. Yes, but that's what happened to baby Christianity. We just say, God, I'm giving you two minutes. If you don't give me a husband to marry, two, two, what, two weeks. A lady told God, she, she was telling me that she told God that she could give God three months to give her husband or else she pack her load. I said, Kai, if you'd like, pack your load and go. His throne, nothing will shake his throne. Are you following? Nothing shakes him. Praise God. So when I answered those three questions, something amazing happened. I'll give you the gist later. What do we need to do? Number one, believe in God. John 6, 29. Believe in God. Number two, believe in Jesus Christ. What we need to do. That's what I'm talking about now. Believe in Jesus Christ. John 6, 29. Are you following? Jesus said, believe in God and what? Believe in me also. Now let me tell you the truth. Because 
when we give an opportunity for some some of you the reason why you've not experienced any miracle is because till now when i mean believe in jesus i mean actively participate in the kingdom of heaven coming to church does not make you a child of god are you following i was coming to church for many years but i never believed in jesus christ yes i was coming i just hear but you know to actively demonstrate that i believe because the bible says if you believe with your heart you, you know what you confess with your mouth that's the full package of it you need to believe in jesus christ then have faith in god jesus puts it like this have the faith of god you see that in mark 11:22 Then this one, believe and stake your life on God's word. Matthew 8.8. 8. Please help me project that. Matthew 8.8. 8. Believe and stake your life on God's word. Believe and stake your life on God's word. Two people, God used the term for Jesus Christ, looked at them and you know what? He said he had never seen such great faith in Israel. They were even people that were not Jewish. Are you following? But people that demonstrated an absolute trust in the word of God. Because, let me tell you why I'm sharing this. Because some of us, even as we live here, as we come for miracle service next week, as we trust God for miracles in our life, many of us, sometimes some people, the reason why they do not receive miracles is simply this. They, they have purpose in their mind that the man of God, when he comes, he has to touch me and rob me like this. Then I'll get healed. A woman refused to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost for years. And one day they were praying for her. As they were praying for her, one cat near her window jumped upon her and it fell on her head. As she opened her mouth and she began to speak in tongues. Now God just helped her life, truly. Because she was waiting for, she was waiting for something physical. And the moment cat hit her head, she didn't know it was cat. She released herself and she began to speak. Because somehow, that time she yielded. She felt, now the Holy Ghost had come. Cat. May cat not fall on your head before you receive a miracle in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The next thing, desire and expectation. Desire and expectation. Ma Matthew eleven twenty three. 23. Desire and expectation. desire and expectation hallelujah please listen to me many times people just come around and you know it the truth they are not expectant the woman with the issue of blood she left her house see she knew she definitely knew she was out for business she knew something must leave Jesus and touch her same thing with the guy at the gate beautiful there was nothing beautiful about his life are you following the gate was called beautiful but the guy's life was not beautiful because i'm sure very few ladies want to marry him his life was not looking beautiful but the bible said that the moment peter and john passed he looked at them the moment he looked at them they called him he looked at them the bible said expecting to receive something expectation expectation you desire and you expect the next in obedience hmm. john 2 5 we may not read it for time's sake but you know the story the mother of jesus christ looked and the wine had finished and the servants came and she told them that whatever, whatever he tells you to do, do. Obedience. Obedience. Whatever he tells you to do, do. The man called Naaman, a very high figure. Are you following? In the Syrian army. Very high figure. The only thing the prophet told him to do was to go and dip seven times. And he obeyed. Are you following? obedience 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 now dwell on this enemies of faith enemies sorry enemies of receiving miracles enemies of receiving miracles 
enemies of receiving miracles. Number one, unbelief. 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 Unbelief has robbed a lot of people from receiving miracles from God. I'm telling you. Unbelief. I'll read a story for you. Second Kings. Second Kings 6. Second Kings 6. Please pay attention to this story. Very interesting story. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Second Kings six twenty five. Are we there? And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cab of those dung for five pieces of silver. Continue. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help. Now stop. Let's just quickly finish the story. Are you following? Let me just tell you what happened. There was famine. The people were broke. There was no food. And you know what happened? Suddenly, the women agreed. Can you imagine the kind of famine that will make women look at their children? And they said, one said, that we will cook my child and eat. And after we cook my child and eat, then the next turn will be your own child. Are you following what happened here? And they cooked the woman's child and ate. Suddenly, it was the other person's turn. Bring your child, let's cook. She said, no. So the king had, the king was so devastated. And he sent for the servant of God. And he said he was going to have his head. Now let's run to chapter 6. Chapter 6 verse 1. Chapter 6 verse 1. Quickly. Are you there? Sorry, seven, seven verse one. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Please listen to this. Thus said the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord, whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make the windows in heaven. My this thing be, he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. Do you know what this means? The guy looked at God with the scientific understanding of the law of economics. And he said, It's impossible. Just the way some people will tell you. Are you following? Some people will tell you that, See, this thing, forget it. They'll tell you that, See, come, let's face reality. This thing is impossible. But you know what this guy said? He told the servant of God that even if God, can you imagine a man saying that even if God opens the windows, opens up heaven, this thing cannot be. And the prophet said very well, it will happen but you will not eat of it. Are you following? Unbelief. So the guy could not receive miracles. Miracles poured forth on the lives of the people that believed. But because of unbelief, he could not receive miracles. Hallelujah. Number two, hmm. faith killers. Faith killers rob people from miracles. Faith killers are dangerous. Matthew 9 2. Faith killers. Matthew 9 2. Matthew 9 2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of palsy lying on the bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Hallelujah. Are you following? Now, I do not want us to read the whole of this story, but if these guys had, if his friends 
Are you following? The people that brought him. Imagine if they did not believe. Can you imagine what would have happened? Hallelujah. Can you imagine what would have happened if they did not believe? Because we see many times that in scripture, we see that many times Jesus wants to perform a miracle. You know what? The Pharisees will be there. They'll be angry. Do you know there are some people that just get angry if God wants to bless people? They tell you, they say, forget that thing. Let's, let's face reality. Hallelujah. See some other sets of people. 2 Kings 2. 2 Kings 2. I'm trying to rush so that we can just have some time to keep praying. 2 Kings 2, I'll quickly read. And it came to pass when the Lord will take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah, Elijah went with Elijah, Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophet, please, please listen. Sometimes, these people are genuine people. They may be around, among the Christian fold though. These guys are called the sons of the prophet. Are you following? They are called the sons of the prophet. See what they said. They said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy, thy head today? And he said, Yes, I know it. Hold your peace. Sons of the prophet, you know what they were saying? They were trying to discourage him. They were trying to say, See, God is going to take away your master. Just calm down. They were called sons of the prophet. They were not called sons of sinners. Are you following? They were called sons of the prophet. But let's see how these guys end. Because many times people like this do not end well. Because the same people many times that come to try to discourage you. Please pay attention. The people that try to discourage us many times. Are you following? Forget about it. Even if they are amongst the church fold. As long as a man is trying to discourage you from receiving miracle from God. Let me tell you the truth. You see that as what? As, an, as what? The progress of what? An enemy. Jesus was about to be crucified. And you know what? Suddenly Peter looked at him and Peter began to rebuke him. Are you following what I'm saying? People that discourage people, they press you down to discourage you. These sons of the prophet were telling him, Look, oh, God is about to take your master. What are you doing about it? Calm down. But you know the amazing thing? These same guys, you will see later in the same Second Kings. 2 Kings 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, are you seeing? This guy was one of the sons of the prophet. Instead of joining and saying, God, bless us. Are you following? God, let me receive your miracle. They were trying to discourage. Listen to me. They may be there. They may be believers. And you know what? If they are not ready to join you to receive the miracle of God, leave them. In future, when you move ahead, listen to me. Those same people, you will be a blessing to them. Are you following what I'm saying? So these sons of prophet, they still maintain the title sons of prophet, but nothing added in their life. Because we see that this guy left death for his wife. At some point in time, I think in chapter 6 now, you will see that the Bible said what? Where the, their tent was small. They had to meet Elisha. The same Elisha they were trying to stop. They had to meet Elisha and they said, Elisha, that our tent is too small. So they began to cut wood. That was when one, the axe, the axe head fell into water. They were still sons of prophet, but you know their work? Then they were at the Jordan. The Jordan that they did not go that time. Listen to me, the Jordan you refuse to pass now, you will still meet that Jordan in future. But the only challenge will be this, that are you going to meet the Jordan as a, as a general, or you are going to meet the Jordan still as you? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because this place, later they, were, they still went to the Jordan. But you know what they were doing in Jordan? By then, they had built a small tent. And they still needed this man. Because this man, there was a requirement. He needed to see a miracle happen in his front. Because the servant of God told him that if he can see God taking him in a chariot of fire, the servant of God told him that the moment he sees that, that miraculous act, something will happen to his life. But they wanted to stop him from receiving a miracle. Are you following? Hallelujah. 
Mark 5.21. Quickly just help us read that. Mark 5.21. Let me try and rush and see. Mark 5.21. Quickly. And when Jesus was passed over again by the sheep onto the other side, much people gathered unto him and he was nigh unto the sea. Quick, quickly continue. The next verse, 20, 22. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Continue. And besought him greatly, saying, My daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she shall leave her hand continue and Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him now when you still run down run to verse Lord help me verse 43 verse 43 please go back to 42 hallelujah there's no need to still go back but you know the point I'm looking for here Jesus wanted to heal to bring a lady back to life. Are we following? And you know the amazing thing? As he got to the house, there were a group of sympathizers. Be careful with sympathizers in your life. Be careful with people that come and you know what? They do not help you to build faith. You know what they do? They sympathize with you. The sympathizers were there and they were crying. They were crying with the mother of this child. She was bereaved. And you know what they were doing? They were crying and they were just dead. You know what Jesus did? I love the Lord. You know what you do to people like that? You push them away. Jesus just gathered all of them. All of them. And he gathered them outside. He does not need them. You do not need people like that in your faith journey to receive a miracle. Are you following? You don't need to, you know not, you don't need to sit near people like that. You don't need to sit near people that sympathize with you. And they are looking at you and they are saying, Sorry, Eyafa. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I know there's no word of faith to encourage you. Are you following? You do what Jesus did. He gathered them all out. And you know what? He kept them outside. And you know what? He faced the business, the real business. And he received the miracle for the family. Are you following? The same thing with Bartimaeus. When he was calling out to Jesus, you know what people were telling him? They were saying, shh, keep your voice down. I like what Promise said when he was leading prayer. Do you know that sometimes people come to meetings and you know what? They are crying to God. There's an issue. They are crying and they are shouting to God, God, I need a change in my life. And you know what? Somebody is looking at them and wondering, why is this person shouting? Said, Are you following what I'm saying? But you know what? I like the blind guys. They didn't stop. You know what they said? The Bible said they cried more. They cried louder more. And something interesting happened. The Bible said, the Lord stood still. Hiya. The Lord stood still. Jesus stood still. And you know what? He turned and he asked them to come. He asked what will he do for them. If people are around you and they are enemies of faith, they sympathize with you. They do not spoil you up towards faith. Are you following? They sympathize and tell you, hey, yeah, sorry, this is how the thing is. It happens to everybody. You've been trusting God for a job. You've been trusting God for a blessing. You are trusting God for a miracle in your family. Healing and breakthrough. And you know what? People will come and say, that's how the country is. You know what we call people like that? Sympathizers. Even in the tomb of Lazarus. You know what? The Bible said the moment they saw Mary crying and what? You know what they did? They ran. They followed. Sympathizers. They followed. They are always there. Always around. They can be religious. They can be in church. They can be members of your family. Are you following what I'm saying? They can be members of your family. Now, don't hate them. We're not saying you should hate them. Are you following? But what you should see is this. You should see superiority. You understand? You should see beyond what, what they are doing. Are you following what I'm saying? Because they can sympathize with you. Hmm. They can sympathize with you. Another enemy, a terrible enemy is shame. Shame. Do you know some people do not receive miracles? You know the reason? They are ashamed. They are too conscious. God is speaking and you know, God will stand and God will speak through many times and say, there's somebody here, a case, and you know what? The person is too organized. Have you seen a woman with real serious issue? Do you know, she doesn't even care if he's a male medical doctor. 
Have you seen somebody they are operating? I don't know if you've ever seen somebody they are operating and they cut you open. And you know what? You are like saying, hey doctor, I'm without shirt. Have you seen that kind of thing happen? If you're a medical doctor and you see a patient like that, what will you do? You will know this patient is not serious. Are you following? But a woman with the issue of blood. Now let me describe to you a picture of that woman. Because the Bible said, you know, she had a flow of blood for 12 years. So they regarded her, her as unclean. She must have been stained with blood. But you know what? Regardless of what, she put shame aside. She put shame aside. What have you been ashamed of? What have you been covering? What shame has been holding you down? Receive miracle. No. You know why? You are ashamed. You are conscious of your dignity. But the woman with the blood all over her body, most likely she had blood because, you know, they kept calling her unclean. And for a woman to be bleeding 12 years, you know it's not small bleeding. But she defied all odds. And you know what? She was passing between the people. She said, I don't care about you. She was looking for Jesus Christ. The Bible said she made up her mind. She said, if I may for what? Touch the helm of his garment. She didn't ask for permission. They looked at Naaman and they said what? Naaman, strip yourself and wear only possibly just something to cover him. Are you following? And a high superior officer like you, go to the muddy river and you know what? Deep. Seven times. And he removed shame. That's an enemy of miracles. Are you following? Shame. Now finally. Desire. Believe. Receive. And the having. Mark 11, 23. That's final scripture I'll read. Then we'll pray. Mark 11. Please see the scripture. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Are you following? But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. Continue. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever, number one, you desire. Listen to me. You are trusting God for whatever kind of miracle. You want to receive whatever kind of miracle. The moment you allow the desire enter you, that means you visualize it. In the spirit, you conceive it. You see it in the spirit. You're on your heart, you are seeing it. Before you come for miracle service, even as you are trusting God, you know what? You visualize in your heart. That's the heart cry. You desire. Desire. When you pray, because you know, many times some people do not pray. You know what they do? They just stroll into the meeting. They are saying, these guys will do their gymnastics again. But listen to me. You do not know that as you pray. You know what? Many times, some of you, sometimes you hear words come and you know what? Suddenly, a servant of God may stand here and say, you prayed about this prayer point. You wrote this prayer point. Why not? You desired. So God knows your thoughts. He knows what is in your heart. But you know what? The moment the desire is, because the Bible says the desire of the righteous shall not be cut short. So the desire comes in. You desire. The Lord sees that desire. Then the Bible says, when you pray, when you pray, you pray. You pray. You have to pray. You have to pray. Ask Hannah. Did she love the Lord? Yes. Did she pray? Yes. Ask Simeon. He was a prophet of God. He was born in incense. But you know what? The Bible said what? In the time of prayer, just as his lot was, okay? It was allotted to him for born incense. During the time of prayer, he had an encounter, a visitation from God. Prayer. He said, believe that ye receive them. Are you seeing this English? He did not say think. He said, believe that you receive them. Now, let me quickly establish something. Many times, some people do not receive miracles. You know the reason? They do not believe in their heart. And they quickly confess a word they did not believe. We call it the confession of the heart. Jumping and saying I'm healed does not make you healed. 
Are you following what I'm saying? It's not the words you speak. It's what you believe in your heart. Please, please, I beg you, understand this. You must believe something in your heart. I'm very careful before I pray for people many times. You know what? Even in praying for people to get healed. Are you following? In ministering to people for healing. And those of you in ministry, please pay attention. In praying for people, you must believe. God will not go against your belief system. Let me show you why. Let me show you why. Oh dear Lord Jesus, help us. John, 1 John 3, 21 to 22. Quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Please help me. 1 John 3, 21 to 22. Someone with a Bible, just help me quickly read. Then chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Quickly. Please let me show you why. Sometimes, some people shout, Oh, I receive it. And you know the truth? They are shouting. They are shouting from the head, not the heart. It must, it must enter you. It must enter you. See, it must... I don't know how to explain it. Listen, it must enter you to a point that you know you are too sure. You are too sure. Many just come, and you know what? They just, they are not expectant. They do not, they are just standing. You must believe in your heart that God, you can touch me. Beyond a doubt. So you know that the woman knew that the moment she touched the hem of his garment, she was too sure that she would be healed. That's why she didn't even ask Jesus Christ, that Jesus, do you think power left you? Are you following? She didn't ask Jesus, that Jesus, do you think power left you? Many, sometimes when you touch, when the man of God prays for you, you are waiting for him to say, oh, I'm feeling fire, I'm feeling power leave me. No! That you will be convinced beyond any reasonable doubt, beyond any sense knowledge, that you know what? This God must have touched you. Are we following? Please, who is there? Help me quickly read it. God bless you, Mama. Help me quickly. He said, Beloved, if our hearts condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments. If our hearts, if our hearts do not con condemn us, are you following? Why? The Bible says, Whatever is done, not of faith, is what? Sin. Are you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Please, do you understand? I'm trying with this, just to try as simple as I can put it. Listen to me. If your heart, if you stand and you say, even if you are praying for somebody, I say, receive it, you know, your heart, your heart, believe in your heart. When the belief is crystallized in your heart, this is why it may take you long. Don't be afraid. If it takes you long before it gets crystallized in your spirit, let it be. Are you following? But the moment it's crystallized, you know what happened? Suddenly, when you speak forth, the word, you know what, has gotten life. You pregnanted that word with life. The moment your spirit agrees, this is why Jesus Christ said, if you do not doubt, but he believes that what he say yet shall come to pass. The reason he believes so much in the word he's speaking do you understand? At that level, let me tell you the truth. It will happen. Still Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 23. Rise to your feet. He said, shall not doubt in his heart. Go to 24. Believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. The having is the manifestation. That is when they can pray for you. And you know what? In your heart, you sense. You know. Now you physically can feel the pain have gone. Because you had believed first. You had received and held on to something tangibly first. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift up your hands and give him praise.
Manze cross sopra la grava ba 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 E le rondo si fracata le vega da 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 boko saha Le cross sopra la da ba de bondo sopra da 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 Just on few prayer points You are going to pray tonight And the first thing you are going to ask God for are there some things that shame? Tonight you pray that God, you will roll away that shame. That shame that has been tying you down. Those voices from sympathizers, from people that have been killing your faith. Tonight you pray and say, God, I go against that grain. I go against that barrier. I go against that limitation. Those things that have held me back, whether it's shame, whether it's a reproach, whether you've been considering, oh God, Aya Macro Suprata le Rosti Man Suprete le Bon Jigraga la Baba Baba Raka Toko Koshin de le Bose Man Grondi Baha Suprate Lia Ligro Shin da Briato Sin Brodose Mataka la Rapa Baba Kasheke de le Bose Raka Tala Braga la Raba Kosukara Baba 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 Raka to bahashi kara ba 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 Manzo prekelelele boko sa kara ba 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 Reko to bahashu para ra 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 Manzu betong raka tali ra ba 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 Hallelujah We're going to pray another prayer point quickly. We're going to pray. Because you know what? The Bible spoke one time of how the presence of God was strong when Jesus was teaching. The Bible said the power of God was present to heal. But you know the amazing thing? He went to his village and you know what his villagers did? They looked at him. That's one of the enemies I want us to pray about. I didn't mention it earlier but I want you to pray about it. Familiarity with the presence of God. You know what they said? They said, is this not the carpenter's son? Sometimes some people get, they are too used to God. They say, this God, what, what is happening in Koinonia that we've not seen before? Miracle service, eh? Uh-huh. So the only thing, they are too familiar. Seeing people receiving miracles, but they are not receiving. Familiarity. Familiarity. Let me tell you the truth. That is a demonic thing that needs to leave our hearts. And they do not receive miracles. So people come for miracle service. They are too familiar. They are used to seeing people receive miracles. They are not receiving. They are too familiar. So they become complacent. Pray and ask the Lord, Lord. Libro si prete liboro si kata Riato shalianda Viando kosinlo robo koshi karababa Lembro soko to baragada gadagada La prakata la rababa bababa kasha karababa bababa Rato koko boya la marala legale bosa gala barabada Ilegale monjo bolo boro boro bori ararararara Ragala manda raba baba 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 kasotari ararararara Manzo prekelelele boko saha In the name of Jesus Please listen to me, this prayer point is not for everybody It's for those that are desperate to say God Make me a sign and a wonder. Because the Bible says, me and my, the children the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders. It's not our joy. Listen to me. 
it's not it's no joy for any man of God except few maybe that you know the truth they are happy that the design of God is this that you are supposed to walk to the hostel and you look at somebody and you tell the person this is what is wrong with your family but God wants to heal you and God wants you to get born again are you following the joy is that you look at somebody and you pray for the person get healed your parents are suffering many of you wait reduce that sound first please listen to me many of us are so excited when will you become a miracle worker your joy is to quickly carry forward thank god for many times when we heard the testimony um i called apostle and he prayed for me thank god but the question is this i like the challenge your mother gave you that you know they see you going and praying in tongues for hours what do you think that tongue is for praying for hours and guess what a challenge is there in your family and he's resting there. You are praying. Let morning do. So that I'll pick phone and call. The next prayer point is this. Please, the next prayer point is this. You are going to ask God. Sincerely. This is not for show now. The reason why you are asking for it is not for show. Is that you bring solutions to the cry of many. I was reading a testimony. When I was reading that testimony, let me tell you what happened to me. Like a jolt of electricity hit my spirit. I began to run. I'm telling you, I was reading a testimony, a testimony John Gillick was sharing about a man, Letwaba. The guy was not educated, very educated like that. He could not preach with big English. I don't even know how to preach with big English. Are you following? He could not preach with big English, but guess what? John Gillick shared how he went to the guy's house. And he went to see the guy and as he went to the village the guy's wife told him that the guy went to pray for a family and he said he went John Gillick, the great John Gillick you've been hearing about strolled and I saw that Waba he held a little child and he was smiling the baby fell down and broke his neck and this is how he recalls the story that the neck of the baby was like a doll that had broken like this it had broken are you following? the neck of the, the baby was dead the neck had broken. The neck left. The neck was broken of the baby. And John Gillick said when he saw it, he knew in his heart that war. Let him not stay. If he stays here, that sympathizer faith will kill. It will kill the faith of the guy. And he just strolled outside. He went to another place. He was praying. This kind of prayer, God, just don't disgrace your guy. And let Waba just held the baby. And he came out later smiling. John Gillick said, What about the baby? He said, God has healed the baby. Are you following what I'm saying? Listen to me. You have the Holy Ghost in you. There's an anointing of God upon your life. These signs we follow not apostles, not prophets, not bishops, not evangelists. These signs we follow them that believe. Them that believe. Them that believe. Sandra that believes. Sam that believes, Josh that believes, Imad that believes, Abiodun that believes, these signs, we follow them that believe. As you move, the signs follow you. The signs follow you. It's part of you. For many of you have not contended to walk in it. So tonight, pray and ask the Lord, Lord, let signs, signs, I open up myself for signs and wonders. Go ahead and pray. Rekoto koshinda baragadose, pariro civil rasumba lirose, manju patina gombra de, rika tosi kariata, rakata kala braga la la baka bokosha, embro supra taka yagada, randa kashanda, ibale broto kosu paragada, lenzura tashika, manju potonga ria, rieso krosu melenta. Libra kalaba ragada, ragaba kashaka raba baba baba, ragada laga ragada, mangzo prokoto laba raba baba baba. On reshuba la nagada, rekoto baraga laga nagada, mangzo prokopo lo prokoto lo lo bako sakata, jaka kata laga raga laga nagada, rando ko iparondo. Mando si kapalia, 
Let signs break in the house, God. Makoshikaye, Izo Roshanga Ragado, Manzapa Kakayagada. Make me a sign and a wonder. Make me a sign and a wonder. I read the scripture to us. For some of you, thank you, blessed Holy Ghost. Quickly, I'll just read this. Don't worry, just don't pick your Bible. Please listen to me. Because God is going to be giving some of you an unusual grace to begin to walk in miracles. But be careful, do not get arrogant. God will, God will anoint some of you. Are you following? God will anoint some of you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me quickly read this. Thank you, Lord. Joel 28. Joel 228, sorry. And it shall come to pass, afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders the effect. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to me, just lift up your hands and pray. And you, you'll be asking God, I'm saying, Lord. Hallelujah. Please, just a minute. Worship, guys. Just load the sound and listen. Listen to me. This is what you ask God. These hands. God designed these hands not to eat eba and rice. If you know the miracles, the blessings, your hands were to shake people and to bring healing to some people's body. Your hands are supposed to shake some people like, you know, to give them favor. The way a native doctor will shake you. And something miraculous is supposed to happen. These hands, some of you, your hands are to write exams that you will be amazed at the result. These hands, these hands you are seeing, these are your hands, because you know, in the in the heart of the Creator, there are things He has fashioned and He has proposed for our hands. Tonight, you ask God, God, the reason for these hands, Aya. that Lord, supernaturally, these hands will stop to be ordinary. 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 Hey ya! Rushikabon jadiata kondaria. Rindo kosindo bohitata. Sile pro suprata yagada. Rakata kashakala barababa. Go ahead and pray. Mangzo koto bogoroba lagaragada. Ragada laga ragada baka shoka ragada gada. Lendo roko poko shinde ribaba. For some of you, the fire of God will come upon your hand. The fire of God will come upon your hand. 
I'm feeling like angels pouring oil upon people's head. I'm sensing oil being poured upon your head. Your hands are signs for signs and for wonders. Your hands for signs and for wonders. Your hands are for signs and for wonders. Baraka shaka taragada. name of Jesus there's somebody here the Lord is going to be visiting you tonight you will see yourself you will see yourself this night you will see yourself it will happen to you in a dream you will see yourself enter a hospital and be praying for the sick You'll be jacking people out of sick bed. <laughs> Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Miracles, Lord, make us men and women of miracles. Where we sleep, let miracles follow. As we move, let miracles follow. As we walk, let miracles follow. Let our lives be miracles. Sign with our lives. 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 Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.